Good morning, everybody. Uh, blessed Palm and Passion Sunday to you. This is uh, our virtual worship, uh, our YouTube recording. Uh, on Sunday morning, we will also uh, have in-person worship as well as live stream. And that will happen all week long. Uh, on Monday, Thursday at 6.30, we have worship in person, and we will also live stream that. Uh, Good Friday as well at 6.30. And then next Sunday morning, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord at 8 and 9.30. And those are also in person or stream. We will not be doing an, an, a YouTube virtual recording for those services. So please um, join us for the stream or watch the stream later on after the service is completed. You can do that also. We are entering the holiest and most profound week and the most blessed week of a Christian's life. Um, my prayer is that this week will bless you and that it will carry you uh, into a resurrection life uh, beyond Easter Sunday. Uh, today, uh, if you, I, I don't know if you'll have palms at home, but wave your hands, I think, when we uh, wave palm branches and um, and uh, I hope that, uh, that you will be blessed. So let's take a minute to quiet our hearts, and then we will begin our morning worship. You'll find the invocation on the first page of our Holy Week virtual worship. We begin our Holy Week journey in the passion of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the, the King, King of Kings. Kings. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. With you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In, in your, your mercy, mercy enable, enable us to share in Christ's obedience to your, to your will, will and, and the, the glorious victory of his, of his resurrection, resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, God now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading of Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. 
Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Word of God, strength for this Holy Week journey. Thanks be to God. Good morning and happy Palm Sunday. Hope you all are doing well. Hey, I want to show you something. This is a, this is a cloak. And a cloak was a very valuable piece of clothing that people back in Jesus' time wore. The men, the women, the boys and girls wore it every single day. They used it to keep them warm. They also put it on their heads like this to protect them from the sun because where Jesus lived, it was very, very, very hot. They would also take this cloak and kind of put it over their nose and their mouth like this to protect them from the sand that would blow in the desert. So this was a very, very important piece of clothing. It was so special to them. But you know what? One day when Jesus came riding on his colt through Jerusalem, the people actually put it on the road like I am doing right now. They put it on the road for Jesus and maybe a dog or two to walk on or to ride on. Jesus, they wanted Jesus to ride on this cloak because the road was kind of bumpy and they wanted his path to be smooth because he was their king. They loved Jesus so much and they wanted him to be comfortable as he rode in through Jerusalem. Now something so valuable like this, they gave it for Jesus. They laid down their cloaks for Jesus. They knew that it was going to get dirty and gross and maybe even full of colt poop, but they didn't care because they loved Jesus so much. Now, what would you, excuse me, hon, thank you. What would you lay down for Jesus? How about giving somebody a teddy bear that was sick? That's like laying down your cloak because that teddy bear is special for you, but maybe that sick person needs it more. Or how about giving money to someone that, that was kind of hungry? That would be like laying down your cloak for Jesus, something valuable to you and giving it to someone that needs it. You know what? I watch Netflix way too much. And if I lay down my Netflix for Jesus and instead maybe read the Bible a little bit more or did some devotions to learn more about Jesus, I would be laying down my cloak for Jesus too. I know a lot of you love video games and you love playing on your iPads. How about if you lay down those for a little bit and wrote a letter to your grandma? Jesus would love that and he would be so happy if you did that and I think you would be happy too. We love Jesus and we want to do what he would want us to. So let's lay down our cloaks. Should we pray? Dear Jesus, we love you and we know you love us too. Thank you for helping us see this love by laying down our cloaks for you. You are an amazing God, our wonderful King, and we would do anything for you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 
you have a great day. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Palm Sunday Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been confronted with absolutely disgusting brutality. First in Atlanta, and then earlier this week in Boulder. 18 people viciously murdered at the hands of two 21-year-olds. Two young men snuffing out all those innocent lives. How in the world does such evil and hatred happen in our world and so close to home? We've also seen peaceful protests this year and yes, violent and destructive riots that I'm guessing some people never intended to be a part of. But movements, you know, can work for both good and for evil and upstanding citizens can be swept away by either. Today we encounter such a movement. The shouts of Hosanna from the crowds from this parade were not exclamations of pious sentiments. It wasn't hallelujah or praise the Lord or amen. Hosanna means in Hebrew, save us, we beseech you. They hope for deliverance from the oppression of the Romans, deliverance from the scribes and Pharisees, those haughty, arrogant men who belittled the Israelites, who belittled the Jews and questioned their feeble commitment to their God. But in a week's time, a crowd of ordinary, exuberant and joyful people is swept up in an evil movement against an innocent man. How did this happen? How did jubilant, ordinary parade goers turn so sour in such a short period of time? I have no doubt that the good, that the people who lined the streets of Jerusalem the day that Jesus entered on a donkey were good, good people. I'm sure they lived honorable lives. I'm sure they loved their children, that they read and studied the Torah, that they feared and respected God. Good, good people who by the end of the week were swept up in an evil cause. In Lloyd Douglas's novel, The Robe, written and published a a whole lot of years ago, a really long time ago, Peter, the rock upon which Jesus built his church and the centurion that stood at the foot of the cross are solemnly reflecting the Saturday after Jesus' death and they are reflecting on what they had done the days before. Both men found the courage to be honest. I crucified him, confesses the centurion. Peter says, but, but I betrayed him. 
Our own sin against Jesus rarely rises to the level of the cross and its crucifixion. But if we are truthful, we will stoop to betrayal if the price is right. If we are honest, we must admit that the leading characters in this week's drama were really no different, really no different than you and I. Knowing my own self as I do, my own sometimes bigoted, prejudiced, two-faced nature, it's not hard for me to see the reason for the entire unsavory affair that stretched throughout this entire week. As Rebecca reminded us last week, we are saint, and at the same time, we are sinner, satisfying our own desires for power and prestige, for self-sufficiency, which I'm really, really good at, and for control. I hate that part of me. I hate that, but sinful human nature it is. And during the Passover years ago, the sinner overshadowed the saint. And the cries to glorify God turned to cries to put God to death. Over this next week, Jesus' powerful life will take as many dives and twists and turns as any life on earth does. Palm Sunday is the gateway to Holy Week. Every, every year, I am tempted to wish for this giant leap from this, this jubilant day across a dark chasm to next Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord without ever dealing with the honesty and the brutality that lies between today and Easter Sunday. But frankly... These stories have to be told. They need to be told again and again in our holy space at church, and they must be told to our children so that we remember the reality of our own lives. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, on this day, if we choose to face the truth, we will recognize that all Christians re-implicate themselves in the torture and the death of Jesus. It's that simple. As Anna Scheid once wrote, many of us will find ourselves cast in the role of those who shout, Hosanna, save us, all the while living into the role of those who do violence, shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. While I don't want any of us to leave this worship today defeated, because we are in no way defeated, we must understand who we are and what our role is in this insidious week and what it is and what it will always be. Regardless of our varied political and theological persuasions, all of us must acknowledge that we are complicit in the reality of sin and injustice. The sin and injustice that brought Christ to the cross. And that human depravity is not simply the burden of human beings who lived a long time ago. Sin is a present and corporate reality that ties Christians of this day and age to our ancestors. As the 17th century Lutheran hymn says, who was the guilty? Who brought this upon you? It is my treason, Lord, that has undone you. Twas I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied you. I crucified you. With Peter and Judas, Pilate and the centurion, we stand convicted. May we not only, though, be tied to our ancestors, ancestors through the denial and the betrayals and the shouts of crucify, but also through the shouts of Mary, who announced that Jesus had risen from the dead. That's our hope 
as we travel this difficult week. May we walk, walk honestly and intently with Jesus to the celebration of the Passover, to the institution of the Lord's Supper, to the washing of the disciples' feet, to, to the betrayal, to the denial, to the crucifixion, and finally, to the empty tomb. It is an arduous walk, one we must travel and one we must take until we reach that for which we watch and wait, the empty tomb, the resurrection that has set us all free from sin, from complicity, from bigotedness and two-faced naturedness set us all free. Hosanna, we say today. Save us, dear Jesus. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world in all nations instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. On the cross of Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are grateful for your offerings to Evergreen Lutheran Church all week long. You have the possibility of uh, contributing for whatever you contribute this week. We appreciate your loving generosity. The offering prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish, nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. This is the Passion story from Mark, the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. 
the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured, poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whoever, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. I invite you at home to please have bread and wine available that you might bless them as I speak the words of institution. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us this festive morning in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the children of God, children who both shout Hosanna and crucify him by the end of the week. May you be strengthened for this profound journey that you will take.
The passion story continues. This is from Mark chapter 14. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. But after I am raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Holy God, we uh, thank you for this week. A week that reminds us uh, both of our complicity and the forgiveness that you offer in Jesus Christ. Help us to uh, do this walk with intention. And at the end of this week, help us uh, to fill our hearts with rejoicing at the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. May the mercy of uh, of our God sanctify your walk with Christ this week. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep, deep peace this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, We were blessed by your participation. Uh, Please know that this Thursday at 630, uh, you are invited to join us in person or live stream. Friday at 630, the same, and next Sunday morning at 8 and 930. Uh, We will send out an email to you explaining how to do the streaming. Uh, because we will not be recording worships uh, via YouTube uh, for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So in the meantime, God bless you, and God bless this profound week of uh, your holy journey.
Thanks for joining us today.